Good morning, everybody. It's Mike from here, the Watchman, and good, good evening to everybody in Israel. Uh, we are just blessed this morning to have with us Messianic Rabbi Zev Perant. And we have a topic today that is just exciting. We could go for the next four weeks talking about this topic. And what it is is the importance of Israel to today's Christian. So you want to take some notes during this, and I need to ask you folks, there's going to be a lot of you viewing this particular segment of the Watchman Report. Take a moment and click the subscribe button to our YouTube channel. It only takes a second. You're not going to get a bunch of emails from me or anything. It just helps Zev and I to put out his words and to touch more Christians around the world by pushing us up on the YouTube search engine. So please click that subscribe button. Uh, we've also had several people ask us to have Zev on the show on a regular basis. Zev and I are working on getting him on the show twice a month. And our schedules are tight, both of us. He's in Israel. I'm in the mountains of Idaho. And bear with us sometimes with the technology because I am way in the mountains of Idaho, and he is way over in Israel. So, Zev, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. Always the blessing and an honor. Zev, we have, a, uh, we have an exciting topic today. And, you know, here in the States and in other parts of the world, people recognize the significance of Israel. And, of course, they all talk about going to the Holy Land. But I'm not really sure people understand just how important Israel is to Christians today. So can you help us to understand that? Well, first of all, we're having, uh, as we're having this program right now, it's evening time in Israel. And today is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, known as the Great Eight Day, what we read in the book of uh, John chapter 7, verses 37 to 38. This is actually a time where Jesus proclaimed, Yeshua, proclaimed himself to be the fountain of living waters. That happens today, and we're having a program today when Yeshua said he's the fountain of living waters. That is not a coincidence. The word coincidence is not in the Bible. And I think it's important to realize that when Yeshua said, I am the fountain of living waters, he wasn't speaking only to the Jews. He's speaking to all of us because we're all the one new man, Ephesians 2.15, spiritually Israel. And I think that we need to recognize that Israel is not in one place and the Christians are in another place, but we're all new covenant believers, and that's God's master plan for the end times. And it's surprising to, to know, Mike, how many believers around the world, how many Christians around the world don't even know that John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38 is connected to the Feast of Tabernacle, to the great eight, eighth day, and eight represents new beginnings in the Bible, which is really a foreshadow of the new heavens, new earth. And I just want to take a moment to read uh, uh, Yohanan John, uh, chapter 7, verse uh, 37 to 38. On the last and greatest day of the feast, that's talking about today, the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, Jesus, Yeshua, stood in a loud voice and said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of water will flow within him. And that's today. That happens today. So the significance of Israel is very important because Yeshua was an Israelite. And without Yeshua, you and I don't have salvation. So I think that is the the opening, and I think that John chapter 7 is huge because prophetically it points to where you and I are going to be, and that's in the New Jerusalem. Well, that's, I mean, thank you for sharing that, Zeb. Now, you know, what would you tell people that are listening to this on how to, how to study, and how, to, how to learn more about the importance of Israel? What can we do to help them understand? Well, I think it's important to realize that Israel, physical Israel today is, is physical Israel. We need to pray for physical Israel. But physical Israel is not eternal Israel. Eternal Israel is spiritual Israel. We need to recognize that, which is a combination of physical Jews like me and Christians like you and other believers around the world who are the one new man. 
So I think it's first of all to realize uh, who is, you know, why Israel and who is Israel. God has order in the Bible, and God's order is from Israel to the nations. And now it's time for the nations to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem. And how do we do that? By prayer, by understanding who we are, by understanding what the concept is of the one new man, Ephesians 2.15, what Paul meant by it. Uh, not just being Christians, as you said, going to Israel for a tour, which is wonderful, but looking at Israel from the outside, but actually understanding that we are spiritually Israel. And I think that uh, when the Bible says in Genesis 12.3, I will bless those that bless Israel, and curse those that curse Israel, and through you all the nations of the world will be blessed. Well, who's all the nations of the world? That's you and I and all the nations of the world will be blessed. How are we blessed? Through Jesus, through Yeshua HaMashiach. So I think it's very important to realize that, and a lot of times I, I see that Bible verse being used in a way, okay, we need to bless Israel, and it's all true. But when you realize that you are, you're Israel, you're spiritually Israel, that gives it a whole different insight. And you're not just looking at Israel from the outside. Okay, we're going to Israel next month. We're going next year. No, you are Israel. You are spiritually Israel. The Orthodox Jew in Israel that's praying today at the Kotel, at the Western Wall, if he does not embrace Jesus, Yeshua, as the Messiah, he's not going to be eternal Israel. Being Israel, being physical Israel, does not mean that you are saved. Jesus said, Yeshua said, no one makes it to the Father, but only through me. That's no, that's exactly what he meant. And I think that uh, that's important to realize when we're looking at our Bible, how to look at our Bible, to look at it and understand, okay, the whole Bible is written to Israel, but now that we understand that we're Israel, in, in the spiritual realm, all the Bible verses, all the blessings, everything that God gave to Israel now applies to the church. And I think that's huge. Amen. And, and you know, Zub, you know, I interviewed uh, Pastor Carl Gallups yesterday. Uh, and we were talking about his new book, and he, he has some wonderful insight that he discloses in his new book. But one of the things that we talked about yesterday is we are in very prophetic times right now. We are, you know, we, we are, really, uh, as a generation, uh, in the most exciting biblical times that have happened in years. Now, with that in mind, knowing that the end times are there, uh, we don't know when, nobody sets dates on our team, you know, but we know that we see the signs and the things going on. So it's vitally important for people to understand this connection of Israel right now. Do you see that things are changing? You're ministering in the streets. Uh, we're trying to bring Jesus back. Um, do you think during these times that it's even more crucial for Christians around the world to grasp this concept that we're all Israel? Absolutely. Uh, Paul speaks in Romans 11, 11 that the nations are to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Well, how do you provoke them to jealousy? By telling them, by going to Israel with a cross and saying, uh, believe in Jesus? They're not looking for that Jesus. They're looking for the Jesus in the, in the Bible, the Messiah that's in the Bible. So we need to understand, first of all, who is Israel, who is Yeshua, in order for us to be a witness. And to answer your question, yes, I think it's very important that the Bible speaks in Romans 11, 25, of the nations, the Gentiles, being grafted into the olive tree. But in Romans 11, 23, uh, in, uh, in Romans eleven seventeen, it says, excuse me, Romans eleven seventeen says that we're grafted into the olive tree. And Romans 11.23 says that the Jews are grafted, the Israelites are grafted back into the olive tree. But in Romans 11.25, it says, until the fullness of the Gentiles. What's the fullness of the Gentiles? It means what, whatever that number is, we don't, we don't set dates or we don't set numbers, but whatever that number of Christians is in the world today, when they come into understanding who they are and what God's master plan is, only then will the gospel fully go back to Israel and then Romans eleven twenty six and all Israel shall be saved. And one thing I want to bring out, all Israel shall be saved, is not every physical Jew. It means all spiritually Israel. That's what it means because we know as much as we pray for the Jewish people 
and we want our family members and the rabbis in Israel to embrace Jesus, Yeshua, as the Messiah, we know that not every single Jew is going to be saved, unfortunately. So when the Bible says in Romans 11, 26, all Israel shall be saved, we need to understand that all Israel is spiritually Israel, the one new man, the new covenant believers, which consists of physical Jews like me and many Jews in Israel, and believers like you, uh, Mike, who understand about Israel, who are praying for Israel, and other believers who are grafted into the olive tree. So many times I hear that people say, all Israel shall be saved, and, they, and it, it seems like they're saying that every single Jew is going to be saved, but that would be, you know, unbiblical according to God's pattern, according to God's Bible, because not every Jew is going to be saved, just like not every, not every uh, uh, Gentile is going to be saved. It's the same thing. So it's very, very important and crucial not just to pray for Israel, but to preach the true gospel, to preach the truth about Israel and about God's master plan in order for us uh, – uh, to become the one new man. Now, ultimately, you and I can't do anything to influence God's plan. I mean, it, there's nothing we can do. It. God is going to come whenever he's going to come. The Bible says no one knows. However, we need to do our part, and our part is to understand who we are. And if we can understand who we are, we can share with our other brothers and sisters and be a witness to them and also be a witness to the Jews in Israel and around the world who don't see Jesus, Yeshua, for who he is. Amen. Amen. And Zev, we have to look at all the things going on in the world today. We have incredible things happening around us. Do you feel that the enemy is getting a little nervous about how Christians are coming together and how they're beginning to understand the spirit of Israel? Absolutely. I have behind me a menorah. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, a menorah, a seven lampstand menorah. Now, that menorah comes from the book of Exodus 25, when God gave Moses the instructions to build the first menorah, the first lampstand in the Bible, to be a light. Where? In the tabernacle. Now, Jesus Yeshua not only proclaimed himself in John 7, 37 to be the fountain of living waters, but in John chapter 8, verse 12, he stood up in the Feast of Tabernacles, and he said, I am the light of the world and he was speaking about that foreshadow of the menorah so i think the devil is going crazy right now because christians around the world are understanding this concept and i, I think that uh the jews are also getting nervous because they see that you know the christians understand the bible more than they do and that's the truth because we know who the light of the world is so i think that it's it's all coming together as a puzzle and i think mike that it's very very important that we realize that there are biblical things in the Old Testament that we read in the time of Moses, in the time of, of Joseph, that are connected today with what we see in the Bible prophetically in the prophetic realm. The more we understand this, the more we can understand what Jesus meant, I am the light of the world, and then he goes on to say what? You are the light of the world. How can you be the light of the world? You have to have Yeshua inside of you, and you need to understand what Yeshua spoke and become a disciple a follower of Yeshua the Messiah. Well, Zeb, you know, people in the Christian community, uh, they, I think sometimes they, they become afraid, and they, they see everything that's going on now, and fear begins to creep into their heart, which we know is of Satan. Um, but they also, I think, become frustrated because they don't know if what we're talking about is actually working. Um, do you see us coming together in bigger and bigger numbers? I mean, you are on the streets. You've been to China. You, you're doing it there in Israel. I know you do it in other parts of the world, and you certainly do it here in the United States. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, we were last week we were in Jerusalem with a group from, uh, from Korea and a group from Brazil. And we went out actually to see uh, in the in the area of the hotel, the western wall on the on the steps on the top. We went to see uh, the menorah. There's a beautiful menorah there, a beautiful lampstand there, and the Jews are always there in the menorah. Okay, but they don't know what it really what it means prophetically. And we were taking pictures there, and all the Orthodox Jews were just looking at the people from Korea and from Brazil. What are they doing taking pictures with with the lampstand? I mean, that lampstand belongs to us, and you know they were really getting you know uptight about it. 
And they finally went to one of the guys from Brazil and asked him, what are you doing? And, you know, they speak English pretty well, a lot of Israelis. And they said, well, this menorah is for all the nations. And they said, well, oh, it's not, it belongs to the Jew. And he pulls out his Bible and he reads uh, Psalms, uh, uh, I, uh, Psalms 117, rejoice all you nations. Rejoice all you, that's what we're doing here. So I think that when the Jews begin to see that the Christians around the world are understanding the concept of everything we read in the Bible, the menorah, the lampstand, the Jesus, the Yeshua, and the Jews are seeing this, this is where on one side jealousy is raising and rage is raising on the other side, but also people are coming into faith. But it, it is important, Zeb, and I, you've, you've outlined this, that we truly understand that we are all, on a spiritual sense, one nation, and that nation is Israel, correct? Absolutely. Whenever you hear somebody trying to replace Israel or, or to say there's no longer Israel but there is a church, that's not, that's not biblical. That's taking Scripture out of context. Because on the contrary, it says in Jeremiah 31 that God made the new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel, and we need to be grafted into Israel in order to become new covenant believers. That means when you have a Christian in Zimbabwe or in Africa that never heard about Israel, he never heard about Israel, all he heard was the cross, which is great, and he's saved, whether he knows it or doesn't know it, he's automatically grafted into spiritually Israel according to, according to the Bible. So even the ones who don't know it, that's the only way to, to make it to the Father through Jesus is through Israel. There's no other way. But having said that, Mike, uh, Paul speaks in the book of uh, Romans 1, 16, 17. He says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto salvation to everyone, to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Now, to the Jew first uh, doesn't mean to the Jew better. It does not mean to the Jew better. All it means is God has order, and God's order is from Israel first, and then to the nations, and now from the nations back to Israel. That is God's, that is the biblical concept. Now, when it says to the Jew first, it also means that the Jew received first, and therefore he'll be judged first. So a lot of people, especially, uh, especially Jews who, uh, who sometimes get saved and they're all excited, they like to quote that Bible verse. But that Bible verse does not mean to the Jew better. It just means God's order. And on the contrary, it means because the Jew received first, for his rejection, he'll be judged first. So it's very important to bring that out. For me, especially for me as an Israeli Jew, because... These are not easy Bible verses for me to quote, but I have to say that God is a just God, and there's no difference between a Jew and somebody from the nations. In God's eyes, we're all the one new man. If you embrace Jesus, you're in that family, and we're all in the new Jerusalem. When we come back with, to reign with Yeshua, with Jesus for a thousand years, there's not going to be a Jew and a Gentile. There's going to be the one new man. That's it. Spiritually Israel, the bride of Yeshua. Well, you know, Zev, that's a great point that you bring up there, because folks, Zev and I have met in person. He was at the Hear the Watchfront Conference in Boise, Idaho. Uh, we met in person. We spent some time together. I didn't look at Zev as a Jew, and Zev didn't look at me as a Gentile. We're just brothers in Christ. And I, I guess that's what the message that I'd like you to talk a little bit about, Zev, right now, is... We need to come together. So, you know, is there, there shouldn't be any resistance here. Don't you agree? Absolutely, Mike. I mean, it's all about unity. When we see uh, separation in the body, that's not from God. God is the denomination, separation, that's from man. God has one thing, and that's unity, love and unity. And I think that there is no Jew, there is no Gentile, there's only the family of Yeshua HaMashiach. And you're right, when you and I met, I didn't look at you as a Gentile, and you didn't look at me as a Jew. We looked at each other as family, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And when we, when we have that testimony, that is when we can be a witness to other Christians and also to be a witness to our Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish so future brothers and sisters that will come to believe in Jesus when they see this unity. Because a lot of times... And, you know, and I, I've been guilty of it, too. When I was a, I came from a, a background of rabbis, and I was once, a, you know, a Pharisee. And I was very, very prideful. You know, I thought that the Jews were the kings of the world or something. And when I, when Jesus came into my life, I realized that we're, we're nothing without him. And in, in God's plan, 
it's just, you know, either you embrace Jesus and become the one family or well, there's no there's no other way. And I think that a lot of times when when Jews come to faith, that's when that spirit of pride breaks down. And so to answer your question, unity and love is number one. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Zeb. I, I really couldn't. I, I, I mean it's it's that unity is so important. Now just for our listeners, so they know, do you have a, a grasp of what the percentages of the residents of Israel that are now Christians? Well, in Israel, and I think we spoke about this several times in other programs, uh, if you go to Google, the numbers are 15, 16,000 believers. But those numbers, if you do a statistic check, have not changed for the past 10, 11 years. Now, that's not true. The numbers are 50, 60,000. Now, I can't prove it, but I do know the way things run in Israel. And the thing is run by the rabbis, by the Orthodox movement, by the Sanhedrin. I know that the main Google offices are located five blocks from the rabbinic movement in Israel. And I'm sure that they did something. They paid Google off. They did something. Those numbers never change. You can check on Google. And I think that the reason that the rabbis are doing it are to show the nation of Israel, look, Jesus is not the Messiah. If he was the Messiah, the numbers would change. And they're trying to suppress the gospel. But the numbers are 50, 60,000 believers, probably more, uh, Mike. We don't know how many are, are you know, and they're home worshiping and how many rabbis know. There's a revival in Israel. That, I'm telling you, 8.2 million people with the Arabs, 50, 60,000 people. If you look what's been going on in the past four years, we're in a, a state of revival in Israel, and a lot of it has to do with Christians like you and believers around the world that understand that they're spiritually Israel, not just praying for Israel, but prophetically understanding who they are and the gospel is being preached. And the rabbis don't know what to do about it. They're trying to change the numbers, but numbers are just numbers. People see what's happening in the street. They see what's happening everywhere. And we don't just preach the gospel in the street. We have a, a congregation. We have discipleship programs. We preach in the malls, we preach in the synagogues, we preach in the mosques, uh, wherever there is an opportunity to preach the gospel, uh, Messiah of Israel Ministries are there, praise God, and uh, the rabbis, can they could write 10,000 on the internet, it doesn't matter. The truth is, the numbers are much higher, the people of Israel know it, and the gospel is getting out, and th that's why this message is so important, that we realize that this is the day where Jesus proclaimed himself to be the fountain of living waters. May that fountain flow through all of us, through all of us, Jews and nations, as we bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. Amen. Now, Zev, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you mentioned the Sanhedrin. Are they nervous? Do you feel like they're trying to push the Christians underground right now over there? Absolutely. I mean, uh, whenever there's a new congregation open or a, or a discipleship program center open or a little house group, if you want to call it, and they find out about it, I mean, look, Yad Lachim is called Jews for Judaism. Their main goal, they're founded to deprogram believers. That, they say it. I mean, that's the reason, to save Jews. Okay, so-called to save their souls from being uh, believers in Jesus. So what they do is their whole job is all day long they target us, they follow us, what are we doing? Where are we going? And when there's a new place open, they stand out near the place and they tell everybody, don't come in. They're missionaries. Uh, they're trying to do everything they can, but it's backfiring on them because the more you tell people not to come in, they come in because they want to know what's inside. You know, Jews are very curious people. So it's all backfiring. Yeah. So we're, we tell them, go ahead, tell the people not to come in. They're going to come in. So they stop doing that right now. Sometimes they put our picture on the on bulletin boards or or they put our pictures on, uh, on the newspaper and they say missionaries, dangerous people. So we just call them up, Mike, and we're not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but we're just, we're just trying to show them that we're not scared of them. And uh, we just tell them, can you make our picture a little bit bigger next time? It's a little bit small, the picture. Can you enlarge it? And they say, you guys are crazy, and they stop doing it. So when they see that we're not scared, that's when they back off. Amen. Now, uh, Zeb, as we sort of close today out here on the show, um, are there, can you give me three places in the Bible that people should go to 
who want to study about the importance of Israel. I mean, we'll start with three. Next time you're on, we'll give them another three. But let's start with, and hopefully at the starting point, uh, three spots that people can go to to truly understand what you and I are saying and to understand what it is that Jesus and Yeshua wants from us. Well, first of all, uh, as I said, start with Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those that bless Israel, and through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Again, we need to look at that Bible verse prophetically and just read the Bible in a chronological order and understand. And whenever you read your Bible and it says Israel, just say, that's me, that's me. Wow, I'm spiritually Israel. It says Israel's blessed, that's me. It says all the nations will be blessed. If you understand, there is a switch in your mind that you understand that you're Israel, Every time you read your Bible and it speaks about Israel, it's really speaking about you, okay? So and the Bible does say that we are to bless Israel. That's true. That's true. But the blessing returns to us because I will bless those that bless Israel. So you bless physical Israel and you're, and you're blessed in the prophetic realm. So I think it's important when you read the Bible to read that in, in, that, uh, in that order. Now, in the book of... Uh, um, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, it says, He comes as a thief in the night. Most people don't know that that's connected to the Feast of the Lord because they've been told that the Feast of the Lord have been canceled. He comes as a thief in the night. It's referring to, to the book of Joel when it says the trumpet's going to be blown. Be prepared for the night is at hand. So he comes as a thief in the night, but to those of you who are children of the light, to you he will not come as a thief in the night. How do you become a children of the light? by being a follower of the light of the world, Yeshua the Messiah, because the light of the world is inside of you. So 2 Thessalonians 5, 2, he comes as a thief in the, in the night, is very important to read. Now, I'm not going in a chronological order because we're choosing three Bible verses, but I'm just giving a, a some kind of a, a, a pattern from the Old Testament, New Testament, how to connect this together and understand what it means you're the light of the world, what is the significant meaning, not just a follower of Jesus, but you will know when Jesus comes in the prophetic realm no one knows the time but we know the season my sheep listen to my voice i know them and they follow me and that's second that's only uh, uh john chap uh, chapter 10 verse 27 but it's all connected to second thessalonians 5 2 to 5 5 he comes as a thief in the night okay so the thief of the night is connected to the feast of the lord which is connected to israel but we're spiritually israel so everything Jesus spoke in the Bible, he spoke connecting to the feasts, okay? I can connect every word that Jesus said, the light of the world, the fountain of the living waters, uh, all these Bible, the bread of life, I'm the bread of life, I'm the Lamb of God. Everything is connected to the feasts of the Lord. I take away the sins of the old, John 1, 29, he come, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That happened at Passover, right? So everything is connected to Israel. We need to see this in the prophetic realm. We're not to follow the rabbis. I'm not talking about religion, but I am talking about following the written word of God. Now, it says in the Bible, in the book of John, um, you worship what you know. You worship what you don't know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. Now, can I give you salvation? I'm a Jew. I can't give you salvation. So what does it mean for salvation is from the Jews? Well, we need to look at it in Hebrew. First of all, Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua. And Yeshua means salvation. So now we're going to read this in Hebrew, according to the Hebrew text. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for Yeshua is from the Jews. That changes everything. So again, if we know who Yeshua is and understand who Israel is, we look at these Bible verses differently because a lot of Christians in the world, uh, Mike, are actually following the rabbis because of that Bible verse. They say, wait a minute, salvation came from the Jews, so let's start following the rabbis because they know the Bible better than we do. But that's not what, that's not what the Word of God says. It says that salvation is from Yeshua. And Yeshua is from the Jews, amen? So that's what it means. So it's very, very important to read the Bible in the correct context, understand what it means, and especially understand that every time the Bible says salvation, we should understand that it's speaking about Yeshua. King David said, the Lord is my salvation. In Hebrew, the Lord is my Yeshua. 
It changes everything. And if we read the Bible and understand that we're spiritual Israel, all these Bible verses have a whole different meaning to it. Not a different meaning, but a correct meaning. And we can get that revelation from the Holy Spirit. And it, becomes, and it encourages us to understand who we are and what God's master plan is for the end times. For me, it's very, very exciting when I see uh, Christians coming to Israel and, uh, you know, understanding who they are and going to the streets and witnessing and blowing shofars and coming to conference. We just finished a big conference here of the Feast of Tabernacle. It was so exciting to see believers from all over the world. And it was just, it was just amazing. So the more this is going to be happening, and it's going to be happening because we're in the end times, there's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Yeshua than this generation. Why? Because it's God's master plan. Why? Because more and more believers are beginning to embrace the true gospel, the only gospel, the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. And, and Zev, what a blessing that is, especially in these times when uh, there's so much going on out there. There's, there's you know, people... People preaching and telling things to followers that just aren't within the Bible. And, and it's so wonderful that we have these things that are going on, uh, you know, and, and, and changing and blessing people. You know, as a teacher in Israel, which is truly what you are, you are a teacher, uh, what do we need to pray for uh, for all of our brothers and sisters there in Israel. Well, first of all, we give all the glory to Jesus Yeshua. We couldn't do anything without him. We're small people with a big God. We just need to pray for, for their salvation. Look, Psalms 122, verse 6. You ask, every Christian knows that Bible verse. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know what that Bible verse says in Hebrew? It says in Hebrew, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The word peace there is enlarged in the Hebrew text because it's pointing to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Prince of Peace, Jesus. When God is telling you how to pray for Israel, pray that they would come to know the, pre, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, Yeshua. And I'm paraphrasing from, uh, from Isaiah 9, 6. They shall prosper that love thee. Now, love thee in Hebrew cannot mean Jerusalem. It means a person. So what is Jesus saying in Hebrew right now? It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that they'll come to know the Prince of Peace. You will prosper if you do this, and if you do this, you love me. So Yeshua is equalizing himself prophetically with Jerusalem, and it makes sense because Jesus, uh, when his disciples were sharing the gospel, the Pharisees confronted Jesus, and they said to Yeshua, can you keep your disciples quiet? And Yeshua answers them, even if I do, the very rocks will cry out my name, because his name is on Jerusalem. And that's why in Psalms 122, verse 6, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You will prosper because you love me, because my name is on Jerusalem. I am Jerusalem. So if you love Jesus and you're not praying for Jerusalem, it doesn't make sense. You don't really love Jesus. You don't really love Yeshua, Jesus, if you're not praying for Jerusalem, according to the word of God. Not because I say so. And that's what Psalms 122.6 uh, means. We need to understand that Paul went to the Jews. The Jews rejected the gospel. He went to the nations. The Bible says that Israel has been blinded in part. Now, why, was, why did God allow Israel to be blinded? In order so the nations can get the gospel. If the Jews would not be blinded, the gospel would not go to the nations. And God is saying, okay, they've been blinded. They miss his first coming. Let's make sure they don't miss his second coming. Now it's your turn to pray for their salvation, to pray that they'll see Messiah Yeshua because they missed the first coming so you can get salvation. Now it's time to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem. How do you do that? By praying for Israel, by praying that they won't perish and they won't miss the second coming. And that's Psalms 122, verse 6. So God is even giving you the recipe why and how to pray for Israel. Amen, Zeb. Thank you so much for bringing that out. Thank you for being with us today. Now listen, all of you out there viewing this video, you are our prayer warriors. Let's see you go on the comments section of this particular interview, and let's see some prayers for Israel. Uh, you know, Zeb, uh, people have asked me, 
uh, over and over again. They send me emails. They make comments. Will you be at Hear the Watchman in Dallas, Texas this March? The answer, folks, is absolutely. So we want we want to make we want to open this up to all of Zeb's followers. Please make the journey. Come out here. Be with us. Be with Zeb. Go to hearthewatchmenmen.com and you can see all details. Zev, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our show today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for having me. It's a, a very gracious invitation that you uh, give me the opportunity to speak here. I just want to bring out that the Bible verse that I spoke about before was John chapter 4, verse 22, when I said, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know for Yeshua is from the Jews. So that would be John 4, 22. I think if people can grasp that concept and understand who they are, I think it's huge. And when you start reading your Bible, that's when the revelation comes. Uh, there's a whole different understanding to it. It blew my mind away when I became a believer and I started to read these Bible verses. I said, wow, wow. I mean, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing. Wow. You know, and folks, if you want to follow Zeb, if you want to see more about Zeb, it's uh, Messiah of Israel Ministries dot org. Is that correct? That's right, Messiah of Israel Ministries dot org. I encourage you to uh, sign up for our newsletters, uh, YouTube channels, uh, Facebook. Our Facebook is going viral, praise God, lately. We've got thousands of people, thousands of comments, and we're just excited. I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us uh, because that's what it's all about. It's all about the one new man. And, and, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Zev. We really want to thank all of you. Zev and I both do. And all praise goes to Yeshua. But, you know, the last interview that we did together, 2.4 million people viewed it. And, and we're just so grateful that you're all listening to us and trying to better understand the word and the meaning of Israel to today's Christians. Again, God bless you, Zeb. I can't wait to see you in March in Dallas. Amen. If Yeshua doesn't come back till then, we'll see, we'll see each other in Dallas. If not, I'll meet you in the air. <laughs> and then we'll have a conference up there with an amazing speaker. But, Amen. Uh, folks, you know, we're, we're at the end of the day, to, or at the end of the time for today's show. Uh, please go to Zeb's site, messiahofisraelministries.org. Uh, just Google him, Zev Parat, P-O-R-A-T. Uh, get involved, especially if you're here in the United States. Get involved. So until next time, remember one thing. You can do anything with Jesus, Yeshua, in your heart, except nothing at all. So get out there, answer his call, and get busy. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you here next time on The Watchman's Report.